Hi everybody, welcome to Muttering with Mule, the weekly talk show in which I talk about games, movies and any other shite that comes into my head. If you're watching this on YouTube, then be sure to check me out on SoundCloud, and if you're listening to me on SoundCloud, then be sure to check me out on YouTube. This drops every Thursday, and yeah, if you're interested, then please be sure to hit me a subscribe and a follow. You can also check me out on Twitter at GamingMule88, and you can also check me out on Facebook at GamingMule88 as well. Now. Today we are going to talk about two topics, uh, well actually three, okay, um, the first one being apologies that I didn't bring out in Muttering with Mule last week, I was just caught up with recording Resident Evil, um, I've been emailing a lot of PR companies as well asking for review copies of games and things like that, just so that I can kind of mix the channel up a little bit and give you maybe something a little bit more up to date, so um, yeah, that's basically why I couldn't give you an episode last week, so I do apologise for that, but we are back this week, and we've got, yeah, a couple of things that I want to talk about today. Uh, one of which is quite a positive thing, and the other of which is not quite a positive thing. So I think we're going to go with the positive first. Ordinarily, people tend to get the bad news out of the way, but we'll, st we'll leave the bad news till later in the video. First off, we're going to talk about good stuff. Now. This weekend, I had the pleasure of visiting Doncaster to go to the uh, video game market that was at the, uh, the Dome in Doncaster. Uh, it's a retro video game market. I believe they... I know they hold it every year, but I'm not sure if they do it... I think they do it more than once a year. I know they're certainly doing it more than once this year. And basically, it's in a big massive hall that they've got at the Dome um, in Doncaster and it's just full of retro game dealers in there. It is brilliant. It's a geek's paradise, a retro geek's paradise. You can get things from every kind of side of the spectrum of retro gaming. You can pick up consoles, you can pick up old computers, you can pick up imports, you can pick up games, you can pick up merchandise, you can pick up art, you can pick up all kinds of awesome things at this place. And it was a great day out. I went, out, I went there with a couple of my friends and we spent pretty much the whole day there. I think we got there about half ten, eleven o'clock and we stayed there till about five-ish I think. We walked around there a good few times looking for bargains and just general interesting stuff. It was absolutely rammed in that place as well, absolutely rammed. When we got there, the queue to go in was huge, like the middle of the dome, which is where, which isn't where the, um, the market was taking place, that's kind of like an eating area kind of thing, but it's this huge area and it's got like a staircase that goes all the way around and there was queues coming out of that door and then all around the room once, like a spiral around the room and then it went kind of up and down and all over the place, it was a massive queue, the place was so busy, it was unreal. Um, and But yeah, we got in and we just kind of like did our first Round. We probably went round there about four times, and uh, it was just fantastic seeing all. It was a, huge, a brilliant nostalgia trip. It was um, just seeing all of these old consoles and old games. Like they had everything there. You could they had like M Mega Drive games or Sega Genesis, uh, Master System, NES, SNES, PlayStation, PlayStation Two, uh, Spectrums, Amigas, Commodores, uh, Jaguars. Links, fucking everything, and it was so, so much fun, and I had an absolutely great day there, it was brilliant. Um, and you could really genuinely pick up some good bargains there as well. I mean, you had some quite clear, like, big dealers there, um, that clearly kind of trade on the internet, such as eBay, uh, probably their own websites, they probably have their own shop as well, based somewhere. And, you know, they had a, a huge selection of items there, games, consoles, and things like that. Um, but th I found that those larger dealers could be a bit more pricey, but there was... Uh, they were kind of, like, around the edge of the room. And then in the centre, that's when you had, like, your smaller de dealers. Possibly people that do it more of as a hobby than a, uh, like, a, a money-making venture. And they had some real good, like, trinkets that you could find there. Fantastic nostalgia things, and they generally had better deals as well, but their stock was much more limited. Um, 
so you did have to shop around because there was a lot of products there, but there was a lot of the same products there in different stalls for different prices. So if you'd if you were looking for something specific, which I was, um, if you were to get it as soon as you found it, then chances are 10 minutes later you'd find another dealer that had the same thing for a cheaper price. So you really had to shop around. If you wanted if you wanted to go there for just an hour or so, I would say it, it wouldn't have been worth it. But being there for the whole day, I got I, I got to take everything in and it was great. So what did I get when I uh, when I went there? So I picked up a Mega Drive because I had a Mega Drive. Well, I say I had a Mega Drive. My brother had a Mega Drive when I was growing up and I loved it. And I don't know what happened to it. I'm assuming, well, he definitely hasn't got it. I can tell you that. So I'm assuming that it may have gotten sold or maybe even thrown away. <laughs> yeah, I loved that thing when I was growing up. Uh, mainly used for Sonic games. That's pretty much all that was played on that console was Sonic games. We had Sonic 1, we had Sonic 2, we had Sonic 3, we had Sonic and Knuckles, we had Sonic Spinball. Um, I think that was pretty much it, actually. And then we had the Mega Collection 2, which consisted of Golden Axe, The Revenge of Shinobi, and Streets of Rage. Fucking awesome games, <laughs> if you ask me. So, that's uh, that's why I wanted to pick up a Mega Drive, because it was I was so fond of it as a child, and I was made to believe that you could find one for quite a reasonable price at these markets. Um, I don't have the actual console here upstairs with me because my girlfriend is currently downstairs playing on it. So I can't show you that, but what I can show you is what I picked up. So um, yeah, the, the Mega Drive itself I got for £30, which came with just a singular controller and the power lead and an AV cable. Um, it was great that it came with an AV cable because that means I can plug it into my like main big telly downstairs and it actually doesn't look too bad. I mean, generally when you put like old computers and old consoles into a new HD TV, it's normally like in widescreen and it just looks terrible. But thankfully my TV actually kind of put it to the correct ratio kind of by default. So it is like a square box on the TV. And it looks good, it looks great. Um, and I was really chuffed. I did buy a second controller, which doesn't really work too well. First of all, the uh, the up um, like button on the, I suppose, I suppose you could call it an analog, it's not really an analog, but the up function on the analog didn't work. Um, but I, being the mechanically and technical minded man that I am, I took it apart and had a quick look at it and gave it a bit of a clean up and everything like that. Um, I think it looked like somebody had tampered with it before because there was some screws missing. So I think somebody had tried to do a bodge job of it in the past, but I managed to get the uh, the analog working fine. Um, but the, the main buttons, the ABC buttons aren't very, uh, aren't very good. Um, so I might try and pick up another one. So, but that, that cost me eight pounds for the additional controller. So, uh, it was a gamble. That That's the problem with these kind of fairs as well, because they're essentially like, they're essentially like jumble sales, really. So if you were to buy a product and then it doesn't work, it's not like you, there's, it's under warranty or anything like that, you know, you, you, you're stuck with it. So that was a gamble that I took. And thankfully, even though the controller didn't work, the console seems to be working more or less fine. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have got a receipt for the purchase. I probably should have taken the card from the person that, uh, from the, the stand, the dealer that I got it from, but, um, I didn't. <laughs> that thought didn't even cross my mind. So, um, but anyway, it's, it's fine. So what games did I pick up? Well, as I said, you know, Sonic games was my bread and butter in the Mega Drive world. So I picked up, uh, I picked up Sonic 2. Boxed. Uh, this was very reasonably priced, actually. This was uh, this was quite common, actually, which I didn't expect. This was um, six pounds. I got this for, and that was the asking price for it. I didn't need to haggle them down or anything like that. Boxed. Um, it's a bit deceptive. One of the reasons, because the this particular stall had loads of um, had loads of these, 
So I was basically looking through them to see which ones seemed to be the, the best quality. Um, the, car the, the cartridge itself is, is fine. Um, that, that's all good, no issues with that there. Uh, but I picked this up because I saw, oh, it's, 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 it's got the instructions still in it. That is amazing. Yeah, I'll take that. I was like, yeah, I'll have that. Thank you. Six pounds paid, boom, bargain. Put it in the bag, bosh. And then when I got home, I looked at the, um, the instruction manual. Turns out it's for a game called Columns. So if there's any collectors out there that has Columns on the Mega Drive, but is missing an instruction manual, then I'm prepared to trade it for a Sonic 2 manual. So, there you go. Go and have a trawl through all of your old shite in your garage or in your sheds or in your loft. So yeah, that was the first purchase. Um, second purchase was Sonic and Knuckles. Now, I bought this loose because these were going for a lot of fucking dollar at this place. Um, I think the most I saw it for was about 40 quid or 35 quid. That was boxed. Um, I don't know if you remember, you retro gamers you, but uh, Sonic and Knuckles came in, didn't come in a plastic box like these. It came in just a cardboard box. So obviously over the years, these bastards are going to get knackered up. So, um, yeah. I picked up Sonic and Knuckles. Uh, it says £12 on the back. I'm not sure if I did pay £12 for it. I think I might have paid a tenner for it. But, um, and this... It's been a bit dodgy in the, in, in the console itself. I'm not sure if it actually is the cartridge or the console, but sometimes I have to keep restarting the console to get the friggin' thing to start up and work properly. So, I suspect it's the cartridge, but... Dunno. So yeah, but um, a friend, the, one of the front, my <laughs> one of the friends that I went with um, bought one of these boxed. I think he paid twenty five pounds for it, and it was in really good condition. And that was it was probably the best one that I saw there. So well done to him because it was in really good nick. And like I say, some of the others were costing like between thirty five and forty pounds. So um, yeah, you really have to keep your eye out for bargains. Sonic three. Obviously, purely so that I can play the greatest combination ever, which is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Hoi! Booyah! Sonic 3 paired with Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic and Knuckles 3, as you might want to call it, um, is the best game ever on the Mega Drive. I haven't played lots and lots of games on the Mega Drive, but I know it is the best. Two games combined into one, and they create this, just this amazing game. Even though you've got Knuckles on the front there of Sonic 3, you could only play Knuckles uh, in two-player mode. Until you plug it into Sonic and Knuckles, and then you can play the whole of Sonic 3 as Knuckles, and then lead straight into Sonic and Knuckles. And that means that you get a whole extra set of Chaos Emeralds to get and you can become Hyper Knuckles or Hyper Sonic or Hyper Tails, whichever. So, great buy. This cost me about, I'm going to say about 15 quid this cost me. I think this was the most expensive one that I bought. It's not in great condition, but it is still boxed. Um, doesn't come with a manual, but that's fine. I don't really care. As long as I can play it and it works with Sonic and Knuckles, I am pleased as punch. Uh, I also bought Aladdin. That was mostly for my girlfriend rather than me. This game is fucking solid. This is well hard. I, I don't think I ever played this before. Um, uh, before the, the weekend just gone. But I was aware of how popular it was. Whenever anybody talks about um, Mega Drives, they tend to talk about Sonic and then like Golden Axe and Streets of Rage, and then Aladdin, and The Lion King. I didn't pick up The Lion King. That's for a later date. Uh, but yeah, this game is fucking well hard. And like, the controls on old Mega Drives are so unresponsive, it is unreal. Um, but I picked this up for a tenner. Uh, I think they were trying to get 15 for it, or 13, or something like that, and I haggled them down on that one. Because, well, because. And lastly, my final purchase was 
Power Rangers, because as you know, I am a huge Power Rangers fan, and I thought that this was going to be a completely different game to what it was. I remember when I was a child going around my friend's house, and he had a NES or a SNES, and we played Power Rangers, and it was like a side-scroll beat-em-up, kind of like Streets of Rage, and it was really good, and I thought that this was the same game, and I was very much mistaken. Power Rangers on the Mega Drive is like is, is a fighting game, like Street Fighter. Uh, you pick one of the Power Rangers and then you have to fight one round against a monster or the Green Ranger. And then the second round is your the Megazord and you have to fight them large. Or in the Green Ranger's case, you have to fight the Dragon Zord. It is fucking well hard. This game is so hard. I genuinely regret purchasing this. I mean, the, the, the case isn't in bad nick, so at least it'll look kind of all right from a collector's standpoint on a shelf. But it took me ages to get past the first boss, which was like the Minotaur or something like that. And then it goes into the Green Ranger on the second round. And I've beaten the Green Ranger once, but I haven't been able to beat the Dragon Zord. It was fucking well hard. But yeah, that's the purchases that I made at the retro video game market in Doncaster. I believe there's another one in August. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, I would highly recommend it. If you, if there's any of you guys out there that are kind of into your retro games, or even if you just kind of want to have a look around. I mean, even if you don't buy anything, I think it would be a, a really good shout, a good place to go. Um, one thing I will say is, and this is a message to... Those of you that attended there, if there's anybody watching. Some of you... I'm trying to use my words very carefully. There's a... There's a, 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 there's a prejudice that retro gamers have. Generally, a lot of gamers in general, to be fair. And that is that we just kind of sit on our asses all day, playing video games, and, you know, not washing, and, you know, general hygiene levels are quite low. And I am firmly against this prejudice and these presumptions of gamers. Because quite clearly, I'm not. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't dress like this all the time. I have just got in from work. This is why I'm wearing a shirt and tie and, you know, I'm wearing my, my work glasses and shit. But, you know, I am firmly against that opinion. However, there was a lot of people at this market that did fit that description. And when you are in a room full of hundreds, maybe even thousands, of smelly geeks, it becomes a little bit unpleasant. I mean, my eyes were probably watering at some point. And I don't know how people don't realise that they are doing this. Have some consideration for others, guys. Have a wash. If you go into a big convention like this, have a wash. If not just so that it's more pleasant for other people, but it's so that you don't fit this horrible stereotype that we are getting as a gaming community. Just stop. Stop. Get in the shower. Have a bath. Even just flannel yourself down in the sink and spray yourself with Lynx Africa. I don't care. Just, just, just stop. Stop. Now. So yeah, that was my adventure in Doncaster. So if you want to go and get yourself some good deals, but don't mind smelly geeks, then uh, that's cool. You'll enjoy it. And I, I will be going again. I will definitely be going again. Next time I go, I would quite like to pick up a SNES or a NES. Probably, a, um, I don't know, probably a SNES next time I go. Yeah, maybe a SNES. Um, actually, some of, before before we get off this topic, <laughs> um, I didn't really talk about what else there was there other than the, the retro games. I mean, there was some um, stores that weren't just selling consoles and um, games specifically. I mean, there was one there was one store that did like custom built Game Boys. They were really good. Like you could pick um, like the, the outer casing and what it looked like. And these were back, backlit Game Boys, like original Game Boys, but they installed a light in it. So they were backlit and they came in, they like fully customizable. You can pick like what buttons you want. Um, the, the color of the casing, the light, the backlight, what color you want that, that was really cool. Um, there was one specific 
store as well that just sold imports, just sold Japanese imports. They had stuff for like PlayStation, uh, Sega, Nintendo. It had loads of really cool stuff. Um, and you did find some really rare things there also. There was a lot of uh, artwork there as well, like canvas prints. Um, there was also uh, the the chap there that did this artwork. He was doing uh, drawings there and artwork there as well. That was pretty cool. But anyway, we've spoken about that enough now. We'll leave it. Hopefully, I'll see you there at the next one, whenever that may be. Now, the second topic that I wanted to talk about today was uh, was Loot Crate I wanted to talk about. Um, this is something... It's a shame that I, I, I've decided to talk about this. I wasn't too sure whether or not I wanted to, but I kind of wanted to vent a bit of frustration with regards to Loot Crate. Um, because any of you that follow my channel and subscribe to me know that I, I get Loot Crate. I've been getting it for nearly a year now. Um, April last year was the first time that I received Loot Crate. And the reason I got Loot Crate is because, just like the unboxing videos that I do, I, I watched so many unboxing videos of Loot Crate and I saw them and I thought, this is fantastic. The stuff that you get in these things are brilliant. Um, fantastic little trinkets and products. And they, I, I felt that they kind of got the community and it was really good. So that's why I got it and that's why I started doing those unboxing videos. I didn't buy Loot Crate just to do the unboxing videos. I bought Loot Crate because I thought it looked really good. And... Watching these other videos kind of inspired me to do that myself. Because I thought, I can do these videos myself now. And at the beginning, I loved it. It was brilliant. But after last month's Loot Crate, um, which was... I can't remember if I've received... Uh, actually, where is the latest one? Um, sorry, I've got all the badges out. I can't remember if that's the one that I got was January or... February. I think it was... It must have been February. Ah, it was. It was February, yeah. So, February's Loot Crate unboxing, which I will leave a link to in the description, was... It was fantastic, and it was so, so disappointing at the same time. Because, while... My favourite thing in Loot Crate has always been the t-shirt, and it always will be. They have some great t-shirts. The one in last month's one was a Power Rangers one. As I've mentioned earlier, I am an enormous Power Rangers fan. So that was great. But the thing that really pissed me off was this. Now, and I did mention this in the video, that I thought it was a bit of a sellout, that they will sell you a product that you would essentially need another product as well to use for Lego Dimensions. Um, I don't have Lego Dimensions. I want it, but it's quite steep in most retailers, i found. Um, and for what it is, I'm not sure if I'm willing to pay that price. Maybe at some point, but... So, to me, this was just a blatant advertisement for Lego Dimensions, and I had a bit of a moan about it, but, you know, whatever. I thought, I'll get over it. But I, I opened this... Because I, th I figured, because I love Lego, you probably can't see it, but I've got some Lego up there. I thought, I'll at least have it on display. Cool. So I unboxed it, and let me just find it. I've got it here. My, my, my office is an absolute shit tip at the minute. I've just got stuff fucking everywhere. Um, probably should have prepared... Oh, Jesus Christ. I probably should have prepared this a bit better. <laughs> um... So, yeah, so I decided to assemble it, so I got the instructions out, and I had a look, and it showed you how to build Cyborg himself, which is pretty, you know, self-explanatory. It's a little Cyborg guy. That's fine. Okay. So I looked in the instruction booklet for that. There you go. That's how you build Cyborg. Great! And then you get this kind of like cyborg suit as well. So I thought I'll build that and I'll at least have it all on display. So I looked through the instruction booklet. And it says this. Let me just get this into focus for those of you that are watching on YouTube. Continue building using the in-game building instructions. And I thought, are you fucking kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? But then I thought, Loot Crate can't be this stupid. That's probably just 
part of the standard project uh, part of the standard product that you get in Lego Dimensions. I'm sure that I missed in the book where the instructions will be. So I had a flick through the, uh, the, the, the Loot Crate magazine, which you get every month. Because as I say, I'm sure it'll tell you in here how to build this little thing. I can't even find it myself now. Genuinely can't find it. Where the friggity frag is it? Do, 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 do. Aha! Right. So there we go. So it's like, again, another like advertisement. Which is fine. Most of the Loot Crate magazine involves advertising. Um, so I read it and it says at the bottom, need building instructions. I thought, yes, I do. They they have covered their backs. They know there's no instructions in there. So they are telling us how to build it. So enter the serial number on the top of the box at lego.com forward slash building instructions for the PDF. Fantastic. So I did that, and as it turns out, the PDF that is on the LEGO website is that again. Continue building using the in-game building instructions. That is an absolute farce. I have built the thing, but because I am adept at LEGO, I'm not quite a master builder, but I basically just went from how it looked on the box and put the pieces together and that's what I got. So at least from the front it's definitely correct. From the back, I'm not sure. But because I'm so anal, especially when it comes to things like Lego, I know that this is wrong and that pisses me off. That I know that I've just muddled this together out of whatever was in the box. For all I know it could be completely different and that irritates me. And I really think, I genuinely think that this kind of shows where Loot Crate has gone and that I, I think, I genuinely think it's sold out and it is essentially an advertising platform for products. I sent a tweet, ad admittedly it was a bit of an arsey tweet, <laughs> to Loot Crate just saying that I think that they've sold out. It's ridiculous that there's no instructions that come with the LEGO Dimensions box for those of us that don't own LEGO Dimensions. And I'm sure that there's lots of people out there that get Loot Crate that don't own LEGO Dimensions. And they basically responded with they'll pass it on to their feedback section. Um, maybe they have. I haven't heard anything back on Twitter or anything. I probably should send them a formal email instead of just being the dickhead on Twitter. But, yeah... I've, I've not received a response, and I, I do think that this totally, completely illustrates my point, how I think that it's just an advertising platform now for other products. Now another example of that is there, which I did kind of talk about a little bit on the box unboxing video itself, and that's the, the loot pins that you get every month. Um, if you haven't watched any of the videos before, you're not aware of what Loot Crate is, they um, it, it's, it's a box of themed goodies that they send every month and yeah the, the theme changes every month like for example um, we have this, this one's from June 2016 and the um, the theme was dystopia I vaguely remember this being a quite a good one actually um, and as you can see it's got like a little little atomic bomb um, Designed by themselves, cute little thing to illustrate what's going on and what that particular crate was all about. That was June last year. Um, but now, it's all product placements. It's all licensed things. Like, for example, that one. Uh, this one is from uh, January. That's Origins. That's just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, we've got November, Magical, that's an Elder Scrolls one. December, Revolution, Assassin's Creed. August 2016 was World of Warcraft. They were a bit deceptive with that one because it was in between two original ones. Because, um, let's see, uh, where's July? Oh, actually, maybe not. Oh, actually, no, maybe not. Apologies, July one was... Star Trek. 
Now I actually like the look of these pins. Um, that one looks kind of original, and so does the World of War, uh, the World of Warcraft one. But then the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, Assassin's Creed, Elder Scrolls. There was the Halloween one, which I actually quite liked, but again, it's a licensed thing. And this month's one was uh, Power Rangers. It was a little Megazord again. I actually like the pin, but I think it really shows where Loot Crate is going. And it's a real shame that they're just like advertising other licenses. And I kind of get it because um, I believe that these guys started out in like a garage somewhere and basically got a load of stuff together and started sending them out to people. And but now, Loot Crate is huge, it's massive. I mean, they ship worldwide. Um, they must have thousands and thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, maybe maybe even more than that, people that like subscribe to their product. And it must be ever more difficult to gain these products to send out to people. So they obviously have to approach people, companies, conglomerates, um, people that hold licenses, for these products and I suppose in exchange they um, kind of say that we'll have adv we'll advertise your product we'll advertise your brand we'll put it into the magazine we'll give you these products we'll give you these pins we'll give you these fucking things um, and I think it's a real shame I mean obviously Loot Crate is very profitable they obviously make a lot of money and it's fantastic. And I don't really want to sound like I'm having a huge dig at Loot Crate because I've had some great products from Loot Crate, but I am going to be ending it because I've not really been satisfied with it for a long time. And it's not kind of the alternative um, kind of cool product anymore, like cool license, the Loot Crate license itself. It's not really what it used to be. Um, it seems a lot more mainstream now and I, I want to find something that's a bit different. I want to find something that's, you know, is kind of, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a bit more unique or something like that. So um, I'll be getting the next one, which is the March one, and then that will be a whole year on Loot Crate that I've done. And then I'm going to cancel the subscription and I'm going to find something else. What I'm going to find, I don't know yet. I may, to be honest with you, I may even stick with Loot Crate and just get their, like, apparel, um, clothing, like, box instead. Because I love their t-shirts. Their t-shirts are brilliant. That's the thing that I look forward to most. Um, and the other things are just a bit kind of added bonuses, I suppose, when they're good. Which, they're not really all the time now, I have to admit. So I might stick with Loot Crate. I might find something else. Um, I did my geek box at the start of my run. I was going to get both of them, but I, I fell out with my geek box as well. I didn't think that was very good. I didn't think the products were as higher quality as Loot Crate. Um, so I won't be going to my geek box. I don't know. I'm going to shop around. I'm going to find something new because I still want to do these unboxing videos for you. And I because I enjoy them and they're fun. And it's kind of like getting yourself giving yourself a little present every month, isn't it? You know, you look forward to getting these things through in the post. Um, but I would like to hear your opinion. Am I overreacting? Am I being daft? This is just, you know, maybe maybe I've got the whole wrong end of the stick and I'm just being a complete douchebag. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would really like to know what you think. If you do agree with me, I would like to know what you think as well. Um, also, if you have any suggestions for something I could do in in... Uh, instead of Loot Crate, that would be really helpful if you could point me in the right direction, send me some links or something like that. I'd be very appreciative of that. Excuse me, I'm, 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 I don't know whether I want to burp or hiccup, it's one of those sort of like... <laughs> um, yeah, I would really like to uh, hear some suggestions and know what you think. And, you know, if anybody from Loot Crate is watching this, please take this what I'm saying on board, but also don't take it too badly. I'm trying, I don't want to come across as like one of these moaning dickheads on the internet. I, I see enough of them on forums and stuff like that. I want to be quite subjective and I want to be quite fair when I'm criticizing something um, and not be the, not be the Dr. Knobhead on the, on, on the Tinterweb. 
But that's really all of the topics that I wanted to cover this week on Muttering with Mule. Again, apologies that there wasn't one next uh, last week. Next week, not sure what we're going to talk about. I know um, in the last episode I talked about Retro Toys with Mule. Uh, I still haven't got around to do anything yet for Retro Toys with Mule. I've got a whole pile of stuff and I actually bought something as well um, just the other day, which I am so excited about. This is probably going to take over all the other stuff. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen this. You'd have seen it if you follow me on Facebook as well. But yeah, Power Rangers fan, remember? Power Rangers fan? Oh, those of you that are listening and not watching, uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> um, I am holding a dragon dagger from Power Rangers. And I will be covering this in Muttering with Mule very soon. But I just wanted to show it to you to give you like a, a taster of what's to come. Oh yes. So yeah, if you're interested in that and if you're interested in watching any of my future episodes of Muttering with Mule, then please be sure to hit that subscribe button and check me out on SoundCloud as well. Please leave me some comments and I'll speak to you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye now.